I'm Carrie Vrabel. I am a wild food forager and I'm, state, I'm certified by the state of Indiana and the state of Michigan as a wild mushroom identification expert. I took several classes and um, they require um, recommendation letters, so, so usually there's a test associated with the class and then um, if you pass the test then that can count as one of your recommendation letters. So, so there are somewhere between two and three thousand species of mushroom in Indiana. Um, and some, they're still being discovered. New species are still being discovered. So it's, it's very overwhelming to get started. So typically, um, the easiest way to start learning edible mushrooms is to really get to know one edible mushroom at a time and focus on that one instead of trying to just you know, find a mushroom and then figure out if it's edible or not. So, because um, it, it can be a little bit intimidating and there are some uh, poisonous mushrooms out in the woods. So right here, um, this is a really good specimen here. This is a pheasant back or also called a dryad saddle mushroom. Um, and this is a, in a really good stage for harvesting. So um, as we know, morel season is a little bit late this year. Um, this is a mushroom that comes out typically a little before or right around the same time as morel mushrooms. And it's a delicious edible mushroom. It's, it's often overlooked by people. So. Um, and there really aren't lookalikes, very many lookalikes associated with the pheasant back. So they grow on dead, just like what we, we're seeing here, you're always going to find these on dead and decaying tree stumps. They, they actually call them a morel hunter's consolation prize because um, you typically, you'll be out looking for morel mushrooms and you'll find this and um, it's a little easier to spot instead of being down in the leaf litter, it's up on a tree stump. Okay, so when we're harvesting these mushrooms, you just want to cut them off of the, of the wood material that they're on so that you're not taking dirt and chunks of wood home with you. Whoops, there we go. So you can see the underside of these mushrooms. They're little tiny pores. And the way we evaluate um, how ready to eat these are is if the pores are really small and shallow, then it's a very tender, juicy mushroom. And um, the bigger they get, so these are starting to get a little bigger. This is starting to have a little bit of a tougher texture. Um, this would probably be uh, something you could, you could try to chop it really thinly and eat it. It might be a little chewy. Um, otherwise, you could use it in a soup stock. And it has a, a really good, it's kind of a cross between a cucumber and a, the rind, like a watermelon rind. It has a really neat smell to it. Um, these younger ones might be, let's see if I can find one that has, that's a little younger. Okay, yeah, this is a good, this is a good example of a really tender one. So the pores are, are still really tiny. You can see the pores are really tiny. Um, this is still pretty juicy and this would be a nice one to, to chop into little, slice it really thinly and then you can saute it in some olive oil, some salt. It doesn't taste, I wouldn't really describe it as earthy. It has a nice sort of just standard mushroom flavor with a little bit of a, a little bit of that cucumber flavor, you know, added flavor to it. So this is what uh, pheasant back mushrooms look like when they get older. And they get quite a bit larger. They come out straight, sort of like a shelf and they get this really dark stem, a really dark area. Sometimes it even gets to be black right above where the stem is. So this mushroom is definitely gonna be too tough to just cut off of the log and take home and eat. Um, but you can still harvest, you can cut all the way around the margin of where it's more tender, the younger part of the mushroom. And you can take that area and you can try to cut it really slicely, or slice it really thinly and see if you can um, get it tender enough to eat or you can use it in a soup stock. It still has a really nice, unique flavor. And um, like I said, there's really not much that looks else that looks like this in the woods. So this is a good one to know. So another wild edible that's out here while you're morel hunting, it's growing right next to the dryad saddle, is chickweed. This is chickweed right here. It has this tiny flower that looks like 10 little petals. It's actually only five petals. So this is a nice edible green that's gonna be growing all around when you're out in the woods looking for morels. And you can just take a tender piece of it. Mm. It's really nice, it's really mild. 
It's good for a base of a salad. It's something you can snack on while you're walking out in the woods. So these are the prize mushrooms of spring. These are morel mushrooms. And um, there are two t species of lookalikes that grow um, around here. You always want to make sure that your morels are hollow inside. That's really the trick. Um, so you can actually cut them in half to make sure that they're hollow. Um, both of our lookalikes have material inside of the mushroom. So that's kind of your, your trick for making sure you have a true morel. So morels are extremely popular um, around here because they taste so amazing. When you saute them with a little oil or a little butter, they just, um, they're the, one of the best tasting mushrooms you can find. And they grow wild, you can collect them for free. Um, here at Fox Island, you can actually buy a mushroom pass and you're free to collect, walk through the woods and collect them and find them. So um, that's why everyone's so excited about morel season. These are some of the earliest ones, so they're a little bit, they're still pretty small. They get quite a bit larger. Um, you can find them and I think they'll be easier to find in the next week or two. This is one of the two species of false morels that grow in the area. Um, this is a species of gyromitra. And you can see it's very easy to tell from a morel because it is um, almost completely solid inside. And morels are hollow. So you can see the interior there because it's kind of broken off. These have a toxin. These contain a toxin um, that's very toxic, very poisonous. And um, there are some people who believe that there's a certain way of cooking these to, to render them safe to eat. Um, but as far as um, the state is concerned, and what, the way I was trained, these are considered poisonous and not to be eaten. These are ostrich fern fiddleheads. Um, people, you hear the word fiddlehead, and really all ferns grow by uncurling like that. Um, the ones that we eat in this area are called ostrich ferns. And um, there are a couple of ways to make sure, because there are some toxic lookalikes that you don't want to eat, that could make you sick. Um, one of the first identifying features of ostrich ferns are these dried brown, um, they're the fertile fronds from last year. They actually stay dry and brown. You can sometimes see them in, with the snow even covering them. They stand up in the snow. And um, they sort of resemble an ostrich feather. So hence the name ostrich fern. Um, so that's one identifying feature. The second is that when you look at the actual fern, there is a really deep channel in the stem and it looks a lot kind of like celery, that real deep groove that celery has. So you want to look for that and that's another identifying feature. And uh, lastly, it has this brown papery skin that just comes off really easily, just kind of like onion skin. It just flakes right off. And so if you have all of those features then you know that you have an ostrich fern fiddlehead, these are gourmet eating. These are delicious. And this is a good time to harvest it. You can eat, even eat the stem. You would cut it off down at the base. You don't want to take too many from a, a group here so that you can allow the fern to, to continue to live and flourish. But you can take a couple from this cluster and you want to cook them before you eat them. Uh, you can saute them, um, steam them. They have almost an asparagus flavor. They're really delicious. And they're out at the same time that morel season starts. So it's a perfect time to look for them, to harvest them. And I should also say, when they start to get tall and the leaves start to uncurl, then they are too late to harvest. Have to wait till next year. While you are out looking for morels this time of year, this is another really overlooked wild edible that is delicious and plentiful in the woods. Um, this is called Dame's Rocket. And um, it often grows as a cluster around last year's uh, flower stalks. So that can be one clue. It also has a really a fur, sort of furry and distinctive leaf here. Um, it's part of the mustard family. And it'll eventually grow and have really pretty four petaled uh, purple flowers. But um, this makes, it actually makes a really good good salad green and it makes an amazing cooked green. Um, I think it tastes better than spinach and it's so plentiful. Um, you can just eat it while you're out in the woods looking for mushrooms. So another overlooked edible while you're out looking for morels are violets. 
Um, this is the common blue violet. This is a native plant and um, the flower and the leaves are both edible and they taste really nice. It has a, a little bit of a sweet flavor. People make uh, simple syrups and jams and jellies and a, a violet lemonade with this is fun to make with kids. So when you're out in the woods looking for morels, then um, don't forget to munch on some violets too.